will be coming? How many services will uh, will there be um, each week? How many people uh, would be at the community center? Are there sufficient parking spots? I did estimate there's 160 on the drawing uh, in the lot um, on the parcel to accommodate the number of people in the building. If the parking lot is full, can visitors to the WCMA center park on adjacent streets or in neighboring business lots? Ms. Hill, I don't want to interrupt you, but uh, we're going to, unfortunately. All of your questions surround the use of the building. We're being asked whether they can build the building and not whether the use is appropriate or what they're going to be using it for. That's not the issue before us. Um, this is related, to, uh, like my question uh, related to uh, the traffic. So I'm um, just um, presenting questions that might you think might make you think about the amount of traffic that would be at the building. Um, will volume of cars to and from the neighboring businesses be affected by traffic to the WCMA community center? Have peak times of business activity been considered in conjunction with scheduled events at the WCMA community center? Will business peak traffic volume conflict with WCMA community center um, education or prayer or other service hours? Considering the building size of 15,000 to 18,000 square feet, what's the maximum people that can fit? With 160 parking spaces, where, um, where will additional cars park if more than 160 cars full of people fit? Uh, addressing um, the city council and city services, will there be limits to the number of cars? How will these limits be enforced? If there are no written limits, then what rules apply? How will the city safety and security forces enforce overcapacity in the future if there is no limit defined at this time during the permitting process? What time of day will there be activity? What will the schedule be during the month of Ramadan or other special occasions? And uh, one last item, on the county auditor's map, the uh, online, the parcel ending in number, numbers, uh, this is the current online, uh, 087 indicates it is 1.1 acre, but it is marked as a tiny triangle located at the intersection of Center Ridge Road and McKinley Avenue. So I'm just curious where the 1.1 acres are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to address council this evening? My name is Bethany Kennedy and I live at 35230 Downing Avenue, North Bridgeville. Um, I have some of the, or many of the similar questions that Kirsten had. And I guess my question would be, since you say that's not being addressed at this time, when would those questions be addressed? I don't think that would need to be uh, considered before an approval is done. So, that's one question that I have. I'm concerned that there has not been a lot of publicity regarding the public meetings, that uh, this is a significant event that's taking place and certainly the uh, residents of the city seem to have the opportunity to be involved in, or at least to my knowledge, I'm not aware of other than the Planning Commission public meetings being held. And then the other thing that, um, I would also mention, as uh, Kirsten said, the um, agenda is listing five parcels it did on the Planning Commission as well as this meeting tonight. And only one of those parcels um, is a, a very small part of the land owned by the WCMA. That happens to be parcel number 0700. 00815087. There are the other four parcels that are listed on the agenda ending in 085, 086, 088, and 095. Still exist on the auditor's website. And the parcel representing the main portion of the property ends in 109. And that's not listed on either the Planning Commission's agenda or yours tonight. And uh, it seems to me that that needs to be corrected, that you could really um, approve or disapprove this item without that uh, 
seen it correct on the agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just so you're aware, the auditor's website is not always accurate. They're always behind. Is there anybody else who'd like to address council this evening? Yeah, I think I have. One oh nine is I'm sorry. Yeah. Is there anybody else <laughs> like to address council this evening? Okay. Seeing none. Moving on to the administrator's reports. Mr. Mayor, you're up first. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President. On tonight's agenda, under first reading, P42-2018, is an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a cooperative agreement with Eaton Township to provide certain services for the reserve at Winfield Farm. This residential development being constructed off of Chestnut Ridge Road and adjacent to Waterbury will be located within the boundaries of both Eaton Township and North Ridgeville. I'm requesting we dispense with the second and third readings and adopt and add the emergency clause as construction is already underway and we have a working agreement uh, that we want you to look at and how we will handle various services. P44 2018, also uh, under first reading, is the ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter a contract with a consulting engineering firm for plans and specifications for the Boulder Drive and Cary Drive water main replacement project. Again, I'm requesting we dispense the second and third and adopt with the emergency to, add, to allow us to move forward with the design schedule to ensure construction before the end of the year. I want to take this opportunity to address under New Business Planning Commission action taken at their March 26th meeting to approve the construction of a community center for the West Cleveland Muslim Association. We received a number of calls and email correspondence to City Hall, both in support of and against the construction of the community center. I want to reiterate that I support this initiative and the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. As the First Amendment says, religious freedom includes two complementary protections, the right to religious belief and expression, and a guarantee that the government neither prefers religion over non-religion nor favors particular faiths over others. As well, the Federal Religious Land Use Act prescribes handling of applications such as this and the use of land. And it does not allow uh, using uh, excuses in their language, such as lighting, traffic, noise, and other issues as an excuse to deny such an application. And they strongly recommend that they uh, be uh, looked at from a positive standpoint. And I can show you a number of cases uh, where uh, communities violated the Religious Land Use Act and were found liable by the Department of Justice and basically built the mosque with taxpayer money, which we certainly want to uh, avoid. But frankly, uh, the right thing to do is to allow them in the community and welcome them here. Finally, uh, as a Rotarian myself, I'm happy to call my fellow Rotarians that are here with us this evening and to present them with a proclamation proclaiming April 10th, 2018 as North Ridge Rotary Day. And if the Rotary members that are here will join me up front very briefly. Several of them are public officials, Martin and Kevin and Dennis. And we have several members of the club here. which I'm not going to read it verbatim, but I'm going to briefly go through it because if you did everything in here that Rotary did, we'd be here for most of the evening, long time. <laughs> so the club was chartered April 10th, 1981 with a membership of 43, excuse me, as a current membership of 43. 
Well, it was charter to have 32 members, and five of those members, Chris Boston, Tom Clare, Al Rite, George Stokes, and Charles Sword, are still with the club. Uh, whereas they have a model of service above self. Uh, they work uh, around the world uh, in their community, uh, doing uh, service, good services for others. They support educational aspirations of thousands of future leaders through scholarships and opportunities to uh, study abroad. Uh, they further support local, national, and international organizations that fight hunger, poverty, and promote peace through conflict resolution. And whereas they uh, serve our city through their talents and resources, creating opportunities and assistance to others that include some of these that they did, maintaining one of the first recycling trailers located in North Richville. They built and maintained flagpoles at Shady Drive. Uh, they support North Richville Community Care and our Senior Center. They graciously sponsor the annual Easter egg hunt. They maintain the grounds at Safetyville. They hold an annual fishing derby for uh, North Ridgeville students. And whereas they are one of the strongest international service co committees, uh, they support the Rotary Foundation, the World Service Projects, participation in the exchange student, the Rotary International's shoebox program, supporters of polio eradication throughout the world, which is one of their uh, largest uh, activities. Polio is almost eradicated around the world. There's still a few spots, but not very many. Uh, they offer scholarships to a North Ridgeville graduating student each year. And once a month, we have student of the month. We usually have two students uh, at a meeting to recognize their hard work. So now, therefore, I, David Gellock, Mayor of the City of North Ridgeville, and as a fellow Rotarian, do hereby proclaim April 10th, 2018, as North Ridgeville Rotary Day in our city and wish to wholeheartedly thank the Rotary Club of North Ridgeville who by their commitment and service to service above, excuse me, commitment and devotion to service above self have rendered an untiring commitment to enrich and inspire the lives of our residents, our community, and the world. And I want to congratulate our Rotary Club very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Safety Service Director. Today we had another meeting of the uh, utility uh, group that we get together almost weekly now on Center Ridge Road uh, reconstruction or construction. And uh, I'm happy to report that the meeting went probably better than it's gone in months. Uh, it looks like the utilities are uh, that are still on the poles. You're going to see a lot of the short poles that are on Center Ridge Road being pulled in the next two weeks, as well as the famous dirt pile at uh, Vernagel and uh, Center Ridge Road will be moved in the next 10 days. Uh, there's substantially probably about $100,000 worth of dirt to be moved there. Uh, that will be out of there because that's where a retention, one of the four retention basins is going to go on Center Ridge Road um, in the back corner of that. It appears as though the contractor is going to probably develop the retention side of it first so they can use it as, uh, as a able bodied engineer to hold the silt back. But uh, Dan wasn't able to make it to the meeting today, but uh, it went very well and it looks like utilities uh, will. Um, not be in our way for the actual construction of Center Ridge Road. That concludes my report this evening. Thank you, Mr. Engineer. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, just wanted to bring up uh, again, uh, I'm taking back on the mayor's introduction of uh, Boba Drive and Gary Drive water main replacement. Um, we have had numerous breaks there, and um, as anybody that's traveled Lear Nagel, um, we ended up uh, having to break into the new Lear Nagel pavement for a break at Boulder. Um, so with the age of that and the numerous breaks that we've had on Boulder and Cary, uh, the city decided it's time to replace that aging infrastructure. Um, D44, 2018 is the first ordinance that will allow the city to enter into contract with a design engineering firm um, for that project. 
designed to take approximately three months. Um, and at that point, we'll be able to get that work out and get the project started um, during the fall. And at that point as well, we'll also come back to council for a construction ordinance um, later on this summer. Um, more updates on that will come forth as the project is developed. Um, for the I-480 eastbound Lorraine Road signal upgrade project, just a reminder, those lane closures will be coming um, on or around April 23rd <coughs> this year. Lane closures will make travel in and around that area very difficult during the rush hour of traffic. Um, it will be advisable to seek out alternate routes um, if you use that corridor frequently. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Mr. Otter. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, 238, 39, and 40 are ordinances to allow for the rollover or reissuance of notes that were issued in past years. Uh, these are one-year bond anticipation notes. Uh, this year we're actually reducing the notes down by half a million dollars. Uh, in the three projects that it relates to is Center Ridge, Rear Nagel, and the Central Fire Station. Uh, bond, or bond Council has asked that these uh, ordinances be passed tonight. So if the rules could be suspended, that would be appreciated. Thank you. That concludes my report. Thank you. There's two other reports, the March 2018 Parks and Recreation Director's Report and the March 19th, 2018 Tax Abatement Review Board Report. There is a Council Committee Report. Building the Lands Committee Report dated March 19th, 2018 was recommended City Council about C-29-2018 as submitted. Mr. President? Yes, Mr. Um, move to accept the Building and Lands Committee Report. Second. Moved by Hung, seconded by Chapik to accept the Building and Lands Committee Report. Any comments or questions on that? Yeah, Mr. President. Yes, Mr. Booth. Could we just have a brief uh, clarify, uh, uh, clarifying discussion on what that is and what happened at the meeting? Yes, Mr. President. Uh, since I'm the chairman of that particular committee, uh, we looked at the uh, advisability of changing the zoning from an R1 to a B1. And uh, we heard from a lot of folks within the uh, community, uh, both for and against. And uh, basically, it's a, it's a matter of uh, whether they want it or not. And the committee did vote for it. It was a two to one for uh, recommending the uh, uh, change. Thank you. And that was, uh, that was there brought was before Planning Commission. It'll appear on the agenda this evening, but it did not make it out of planning commission because the rules require three votes and it was a two to one vote for it in planning commission. Yes, we were missing one member and uh, another member had to recuse himself at that particular meeting. So it'll be back on the planning commission agenda the next time. That's correct. Okay. Mr. President. Yes, Mr. Uh, just a comment. Uh, could you clarify what the vote on this particular um, meeting minutes means or does not mean because again it has not yet gone uh, or had been finalized in planning commission yet. Sorry, if you just said, said in the report, planning commission still has to act. And then council will um, have action based on planning commission's action. Correct. Well, I just wanted to thank you. I just want to make sure that everyone understood that that. Uh, the vote on the meeting minutes is not a vote for or against uh, the issue. It's against whether or not the minutes are correct. Correct. And I, correct. We just look at the report that was made by the Building and Lands Committee. But it's all that we're looking at now. But it could also be in favor or not in favor of their action, correct? Um, is the report out from a committee to the council, and you were accepting that. I'm assuming you're going to accept the report, but it doesn't vote in favor of it yet. The project itself comes back before us after planning commission votes. Correct. So it'll be a separate vote on that particular issue itself. This is just the report that they gave us. Correct. And so again, I wanted people to understand that because there are people here that are. Um, in favor of or against that. I just want to make sure that they know that the vote we take this evening is not on that project. It's just on the meeting, the meeting minutes. Thank you. Thank you. 
Any other comments or questions on that issue? Okay, all those in favor say yes. 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 Those opposed say no. Okay, that report is accepted by us. Correspondence. A letter from Robert Volek, 38538 Avalon Drive, expressing his opposition to rezone petition for 5011 East Road, C29, 2018. Okay. There's no old business, we're moving on to new business. Planning Commission actions taken on March 26, 2018 meeting. Applicant Tammy Thompson, MS Consultants, Inc., 2221 Schrock Road, Columbus, Ohio, 43229, owner of Ridge Car Company, LLC, 27500, Detroit Road, Westlake, Ohio, 44145, request approval to construct a 2,900 square foot addition to existing Aldi's grocery store. Location is 35111 Center Ridge Road in D3 District, parcel number 07-00-021-119-151, approved by a vote of four to Motion to approve. Second. Approved by Boo, seconded by Hutton to approve Planning Commission's action. Any comments or questions? Mr. President. Yes, Mr. Mr. President. Madam Council liaison for that. Uh, yes, what all these is asking for is basically they have a notch in the building and they're going to basically push out that notch. It, that particular area will be used as uh, a lunchroom and storage, but they'll also be able to uh, expand their sales floor by, I believe they said about 300 square feet. Uh, but it will not change traffic patterns. Uh, they do not lose any uh, uh, parking spots, and they also plan on uh, updating the exterior building a little bit. So it looks like a very good project, and uh, uh, bravo for us because uh, it just means uh, the grocery store is expanding and staying in North Ridgeville. All right. Any other further comments or questions? All those in favor say yes. 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 Those opposed say no. All right. That passed unanimously. Item number two. Applicant Andresia L. Parr Architectural Vision Group 23850 Ferry Drive, Westlake, Ohio 44145, owner of the West Cleveland Muslim Association 31023 Center Ridge Road, Westlake, Ohio 44145, request approval to construct a community center for the West Cleveland Muslim Association. Location is south side of Center Ridge Road, east of Blair Nagel, and west of Mills Creek Lane in a B3 district. Partial number 07-00-008-115-085-086-087-088 and 07-00-008-115. Dash one one five dash zero nine five is approved by a vote of four to zero. Can I get a motion to approve? Move to accept. Second. Moved by Evans. Second by Westover to accept the planning commission's action. Are there any comments or questions? Again, Mr. President, uh, since I am council liaison, we looked at the project. Uh, it is quite frankly an attractive building. It does meet all zoning and also code requirements. Uh, they will also abide by ordinances within the city pertaining to any uh, water uh, issues. And uh, their parking does look to be sufficient for what they're using it for. And uh, we saw no reason to uh, other than to look at approving this particular project. Anybody else? All those in favor say yes. 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 Those opposed say no. That has been approved. Number three. Applicant Joseph Lucas, 5079 Pace Road, owner of J.K. Lucas, 5011 Pace Road, request approval 
to rezone a parcel parcel from R1 Resident District to a B1 Neighborhood Business District. Location is 5011 East Road, parcel number 07-00-043-103-099. Postponed to the April 10th, 2018 planning meeting due to lack of majority. Bylaws, Article 3, Section 8. As I mentioned earlier, nothing will happen on that until after planning commission next meeting. That brings us to the recess portion of our meeting. Would anybody like a recess? Um, Mr. President, I'll make a motion to dispense with the recess. Second. Moved by Lewis, seconded by DeVries to dispense with the recess. All those in favor say yes. 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 Those opposed say no. All right, moving on then to your first reading. We have T38. T38. An ordinance providing for the issuance and sale of $2,900,000 of notes in anticipation for the issuance of bonds to provide funds to pay costs of improving Center Ridge Road, certain other designated streets intersecting Center Ridge Road, and a new Cinta run in the city street system between certain termini in cooperation with the Department of Transportation of the State of Ohio and otherwise 